hope you're well. I'm just uh, chilling out at home, having a glass of wine. It's quite lovely. It's um, it's uh, from a Canadian vineyard, um, Niagara Falls, Ontario. At 2017, it's called uh, Homegrown. Uh, seller 4379. Megalomaniac. Think you can see that pretty clearly? Yeah, you can see that pretty clearly. Okay. It's a uh, it's a nice uh, Niagara wine. It's uh, fairly full bodied actually for Niagara wines. Um, I, I don't um, I don't know what grape it's made from though. Actually, it doesn't say. I don't know. It's it's. Um, I'd say it's a uh, maybe a, a cross between a Cabernet and a, and a Syrah, but um, I'm not a wine aficionado. I just know what I like, and I very much like this. But I didn't come on here to talk about wine. Not at all. I'm just having a glass of wine because, um, although I had a very good work day, um, it, you know, it, was, it had its moments. <laughs> It's, look, I, I I really do enjoy my uh, my new position with the the company that I work for. I've been uh, been in it since beginning of November, and the contract was up for renewal in uh, the middle of May, and it was renewed uh, I guess a couple of days ago. So it's another six months. They used to do it by one year, but now they want to do it for six months. But uh, I think the way things are going for me at this. Um, with this company and, and the position that I'm in, that I'll probably be there for quite some time. That's at least that's my goal because I'm I'm very fulfilled in in this uh, position. It's uh, the money is still not very good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, I even talked to my boss about it. I had a review yesterday, and I got a raise, um, and it's retro dated to January first, so that'll be you know a little bit extra money. But it's not, it's not anything substantial. But I, I, hey, look, I, I, I do know that I uh, technically, uh, technically, actually, truthfully could leave and go somewhere else and earn substantially more money. However, it's not always about the money. I mean, yes, I do need more. I, what I don't need to explain to you or anyone else how much the cost of living has gone up in the last little while, right? Things are just considerably more expensive. Well, just the other day, I picked up groceries. I spent 105 Canadian dollars on two bags. And it was not extravagant. Uh, there were four cans of beer, and the rest was all food and nothing, again, nothing extravagant at all couple of frozen pizzas for five bucks a pop. I think the most expensive item might have been the seven dollars I spent on uh, hot Italian sausages, six of them. So a dollar and, you know, dollar and a couple of pennies for um, six sausages. It was six ninety nine plus tax. So anyway, what I'm getting at is two bags of groceries. That'll only feed me for a few days. So... Yes, more money would be lovely, but at this stage of my life, it's job satisfaction is much more important. If um, if I have to get up and go to a job that I hate, it's not worth it. Even if it pays me ten times the amount of money, I, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's absolutely true. Um, your job satisfaction and quality of life are not always tethered, heavily tethered, I should say, to, to your income. I, I earn enough money to keep a roof over my head, food in my belly, and occasional change of clothes, and this stuff that I have in front of me, but I, I, I'm not even middle class. I'm uh, $15,000 shy of middle class. You can do the math to figure that one out if you like. I'm not going to do it for you. Maybe maybe twelve, twelve, fifteen. Anyway, it's 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 uh, it's far enough away that I won't be getting there anytime soon. I'm not complaining. I mean, I still have a very good quality of life, 
and uh, I do know that in, in two years' time, um, I, I hope to uh, I hope to be able to replace uh, my my day job income with this uh, and and the uh, the podcast work that I do, so that I uh, won't be quitting the day job. I don't, don't don't hear me. You know, I mean, I'm going to keep my day job, but I was hoping to be able to. Um, not just supplement the income, but but actually replace it by earning, you know, as much through the multi- multiple mediums I work in right now. Because I do have, uh, you know, there's the, uh, the two music podcast, um, music lifestyle, mental health podcast that I work on. Let me just uh, pan out a bit there. And, uh, of course, there's the uh, political podcast I produce, edit, and contribute to. Which we uh, we were just picked up by a, um, the largest podcast network in Canada um, just a couple of days ago. It was officially announced on uh, Monday. Actually, it's been in the works for a while, and, and we had negotiated uh, to, to get on the network. Um, and, you know, it was like, we're, yeah, we're eager to do it, and uh, very happy. Anyway, um, I, I try and compartmentalize things, which is why. If you want to seek out my political podcast work, certainly feel free to do so. Um, but I'm not going to link it directly because this this milieu that I'm working in, this YouTube, this mental health ASMR is... There's no political lines here. This is for everybody who needs help. This is for everyone who needs some peace, calm, and relaxation in their lives. This is for... Everybody who, when they get home from work or come home from a tough day of whatever it was that you did, you have a chance to listen to this and relax. I'm not, I'm not one to really, I, I, and I do have a number of friends that keep continuing to ask me to do more uh, um, meditations, uh, self-reflections, uh, things of that nature, and I, and I intend to do that. But it's something I'm I'm learning to embrace because it's not it's not within my nature to do it. If that makes any sense, it's not really um, it's not really me. One second, I, I just gotta clear my throat here. It's getting rough. And that's a little better. Oh, that's a nice glass. So yeah, it's it's um, it's not really me to 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 be that hippy dippy trippy guy, if you will. It's just not who I am. I am a pretty chill guy. Uh, I think most uh, most of you would 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 certainly probably take that or get that or understand that from from this. I do have my moments. I mean, uh, you know, I did. I did have untreated depression for 42 years. Um, 40, no, I was untreated for 40 years, I should say. Apologies. I've been under treatment for the last two. So 40 years of untreated depression. Um, diagnosed 25 years ago. And uh, um, I, I tried medication for about two months, 25 years ago, and it, uh, the results were terrible. Um, and as a result, I decided that, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, you know, you know, knowledge is power and knowing what is wrong with you can sometimes very much be, um, the catalyst to help you start fixing and repairing things. And I did what I could for the longest time. And I knew I had a lot of bad days and I would, I would talk to people. And I remember when I first tried to talk about it in the nineties, nobody wanted to hear it. And I get it. And then through the campaign of a uh, large multi-billion dollar conglomerate whose name I shall not mention because they're not paying me to do it, so I'm not mentioning them. They did create a uh, marketing campaign uh, about talking about it. If you live in Canada, you know which conglomerate, con- <laughs> multi yeah, you know the corp I'm talking about, right? Anyway, um, 
they started off uh, and, and did good things by getting people to realize what's taking place, and people did talk about it. But now it's a once a year thing, and uh, one of the um, most celebrated uh, political cartoonists in Canada, Michael Deatter, who look him up. Uh, he's a brilliant, brilliant satirist, brilliant cartoonist, brilliant, uh, brilliant artist. This year on the day of talking. He had pictures, he had uh, two high-ranking corporate individuals within the company, and one held up a sign that says, we took $120 million, $122 million in uh, federal public aid during the pandemic, and the other one has a sign that holding up says, then we fired several hundred employees the next day, because all they did with that money was, you know, pad their pockets and pad the pockets of the shareholders while they threw the rest of us to the wolves and uh, the rest of us, and not me, but you understand what I'm saying? Fend for yourselves, you poor bastards. Even though I want you to talk about your depression, not going to do anything about it, but feel free to discuss it. Well, anyway, that, uh, that company uh, helped create awareness but the campaign is just now a big advertising thing for them. It's just a big commercial. You know, every, every text, uh, email, chat, blah, 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 on our network will contribute five cents to. Well, what you don't realize is that they've been collecting an extra five cents off of every, <laughs> every subscriber for the past year, so that five cents that they're paying out is right out of your pocket anyway. Oh, that's not an accusation. That's how it's done. And since I've not mentioned the name of the company, they can't come after me. But I'd like them to try. Because then I would, you know, spread this news. That it's just an advertising campaign and they don't back up what they're supposed to be doing. And if you don't, if you don't fully understand what I'm talking about and you don't, and, and, maybe, and maybe if you do, but you don't believe that, no, 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 they really are altruistic in this, no. I want you to look up um, a great Canadian journalist by the name of Jan Wong. She wrote a story all about what happened to her and how their talking are just words and not actions. That was a little political, I guess, in a way, but... It all comes back to mental health, and that's what this whole channel is about. It's about um, mental health and wellness, and, and how can I help you find a way to relax, try and get out of your headspace, and silence that voice, that terrible voice that can be screaming at you at the worst of times, because that's what depression is. It's your own voice in your head telling you, you suck, you're a loser amongst many other terrible things that I'm not going to say. You've all heard them. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not there. I'm, I'm great. I, I don't think I've ever actually been in better headspace in my entire life, which might be why I've not posted as many videos lately, because it, 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 it's not top of mind, if this, if this makes any sense to you. When you're in a really good place and you're someone who's suffered for a very long time and been in a bad place for a long time, when you get into a good place like I am right now, the suffering uh, is not top of mind because you've, you know, you've done your decades of that. And as a result, you can be a little absent-minded about paying attention to others that suffering the same fate. And also the thing to consider is that sometimes you just don't want to be reminded of the suffering that you went through. But when you get to a really good place, like I am right now, and boy, I, I certainly hope everybody that watches this and listens to it and can get to the place that I'm at. I mean, I still got my regular problems in life. You know, I got some debt I got to pay and there's no possibility I can ever retire. 
uh, currently, you know, on the path that I'm on, hopefully between this and the podcasting and my day job, I might be able to earn enough money to retire at 75. No, I'm serious about that. Um, kind of like, you know, how every millennial wants to buy a home but realizes it's probably never, ever going to happen. Well, you know, I'm Gen X and, and many of us can't retire. It's not a possibility. Anyway, that doesn't trouble me so much. I mean, it may someday, but I'm, I'll be 54 in a couple of months and, you know, I'm still doing okay. Anyway. When, when you're in a really good place like I am right now, um, it, it gives me time to pause and reflect and think about, oh yeah, Paul, you, you got to get back out there and start talking to people and, and helping them because people need to be reassured. People need, need to hear that they're heard. People need to know that they're understood. People need to have someone that they can rely on. I don't know if I'm any of those things. I certainly would like to be. But more than anything else, I just want to be here for you. And if I can give you this little bit, this this little tiny few minutes here and there, a couple of times a month, my goal is to do it every five days. And I'm, I'm going to try and get back on track with that. Produce a, a short from the heart spoken video like this to, to give you um, a sense of comfort, maybe. I, I need you to remember to breathe. That's important because we forget to do it. I mean, the autonomic nervous system makes us breathe to keep us alive, but really breathe. Taping, taking in deep cleansing breaths. It'll quell the anxiety and elevate your mood. It does help to alleviate depression. It won't, it won't eliminate it, but it can alleviate it. It can take some of that pressure off. And I know it's difficult to do, especially if you're suffering from anxiety, if you're going through an anxiety um, uh, crisis, uh, having a panic attack is the, is the word I was looking for. If you're in the middle of a panic attack or in the middle of a, a very deep depressive episode, I know how difficult it is to try and think about the things that can bring you back and center you and get you into a position of, I will be okay, this moment will pass, breathe deeply, be calm, and remember, it's all going to be okay. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it really all is going to be okay. I know that sometimes it's difficult to fully comprehend. But the truth is, if you can just hang on, hang in, stay there. Remember, the only thing you can lose is yourself. Don't do that. I know that's a platitude. It sounds ridiculous, but hold on to who you are. Hopefully you're a good person. Um, and I do realize that there's probably a few people uh, that might watch this that, that would completely disagree with my um, politics if I if I were to discuss that. I'm not going to, because you know what? I think I think... A great many um, people that are troubled and angry and are, are pointing fingers and blaming other people are, are in that headspace because they aren't happy. Um, they may be suffer suffering from uh, PTSD or depression or anxiety or something along those lines. And if you can, if you can cut all of that out, if you can center yourself and get back to who you're supposed to be, which is a happy, loving, caring, compassionate human being. We're all born with that. Anger, hatred, racism, sexism. That's not who we're born to be. Those are all learned and taught behaviors. And they're all behaviors that you can throw away if you choose to. And everyone I have ever spoken to in my life 
who has made the conscious decision to throw those emotions away and, and give in to compassion, kindness, and learn to love themselves. You can't love anybody until you love yourself first. And that's absolutely true. And maybe age and experience teaches you that. Maybe some, pe some people know it right away. And those are very lucky individuals. I guess what I'm really trying to say is, I just want to help people. Yeah, even, even the bad people, I want to help them get to a good place. Because with what I'm doing here, hopefully I can do that. Hopefully I can help people find who they're supposed to be. Be who they're supposed to be which is a loving, caring, compassionate human being. Okay, I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, and I do want to top up my glass, so I'm going to bid you adieu. This is where we will part ways today, my friends. I will uh, see you very soon. I promise you that. Cheers. Take care.